probably Eugene Sledge, sir. The responsibility uh, in playing Eugene Sledge is enormous to make sure that I live up to, to the man that he really was. He wrote a book, which the show is partially based on. We wanted this to really be based on, you know, real people in real survival situations. The war in the Pacific was savage, brutal. It was hideously difficult for all of them. I've never been more scared in my entire life. A man who isn't scared out here is either a liar or dead. He had that sense of duty and patriotism where he really wanted to defend his country and be a part of that. He felt he owed something to his country. All his friends had been drafted or had enlisted and had left. Gene's very good friend, Sidney Phillips, had joined the Marine Corps and was leaving. That was partially why Gene was so anxious to go. Sid was at Guadalcanal and wrote letters home to Gene. I told Sledge in one of my letters from Guadalcanal that he should join nothing, not even the Girl Scouts, not the Boy Scouts, the Salvation Army. I said, just stay out of everything and anything. He decided that the war might end before he could get over there, and so he wanted to join the Marines. He had to ask his parents permission, and his father said, well, they won't take you. You have a heart murmur. He said, well, I want to try anyway. His father was a physician, and he said, well, let me check you. He eventually succeeds in convincing his father, when the heart murmur goes away, to let him enlist. But his father's the one that warns him. His father says, you know, I'm afraid what's going to happen to you on the inside. The worst thing about treating those combat boys from the Great War wasn't that they had had their flesh torn. It was that they had had their souls torn out. They shipped out to Peleliu, which was next on the list to be taken out by the Marines. The 1st Marine Division was in the front lines approximately 30 days. He was in combat and under fire that entire time. Go, go, go! Here we go! Let's go! For Sledge, Peleliu was his first battle. <laughs> he realizes two seconds into it that war is nothing like he could have imagined. Gene Slade did his job and, and did what he was told to do. You can't ask for any more than that on, of any man. Eugene was fine in combat, but combat did not interest him. It horrified him. There's not a day goes by that I don't think about it. And um, when I do think about it, I try to force myself to think about the good buddies I had and some of the things that we did that were funny. But then you also remember the dead. And how many of them there were. And they were just snuffed out. And you, there's no way you can forget him. My buddy Eugene seemed to be haunted by the war. Gene had nightmares for many years after the war. Eugene Sledge had a very difficult time adjusting to civilian life after the war. He was beset, as were many other veterans, with thoughts about why he had survived when so many others had died. That's one of the cases of war, that not only does a man fight in a war, and if he survives, he's got to live with it the rest of his life. The Pacific is about the private war that all of those veterans had to fight to save themselves from what they were witnessing and what they were engaged in. You can't dwell on it. You can't dwell on any of it. My father would say that one of the worst things about World War II was the complete waste of human life, of human potential, brutalization of the survivors. It is extraordinary that Eugene Sledge came home as he did and lived as he did. What you have to do 
is to try to focus your mind on other things. The thing that helped him to conquer the nightmares and the terrible experiences that would flash back into his mind was to start thinking about something in biology. He had found his calling. He also found that he enjoyed teaching. My father saw himself as a simple scientist with a love of the natural world who had endured something unspeakable and wanted to convey that to later times and other people and that the best way to do that would be through simply recording what he had observed. Eugene Sledge wrote with the old breed at Peleliu and Okinawa, which is arguably the best memoir of combat anywhere. They were not allowed to keep diaries on the front lines. You're supposed to write shit down, you know. Here's the Japs valuable intel, they find it. So he had a little New Testament, and he wrote on the pages of that, he would make little notes to help him remember what had happened at what particular point. And when he came home from the war, one of the first things he did was sit down and write out a complete outline of his experiences. Eugene Sledge waited years and years and years and years and years before he could put this down on paper. And he didn't publish it until the 1980s. That's a long time to ponder what he had been through. He wrote it for his family, for us to know what he had been through and to have some sense of his experience in World War II and something we could pass on to our children. To think that someone you knew and loved and who was so modest and gentle could have gone through something that horrific and had enough presence of mind to be able to write it down in a coherent fashion and, and not go mad. Gene felt that writing the book would lay the war to rest for him. The experience was so incredibly intense that after it was all over with, life was never the same because the sunrise is always more beautiful to me now than it ever was before I started in the Peleliu on that Amtrak. He had a great feeling of serenity. He had already been through the worst that life could throw at him, and he knew that he was able to stand up to it. <laughs> 